Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to create some Art Deco style typography in Adobe Illustrator. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to create together. This is a viewer requested tutorial. This is the artwork that Matthew supplied me with and asked if I could do a similar tutorial into what you see. So we're going to focus on the typography treatment for this tutorial because of all these background elements would take quite a bit longer. Um, so if that's something you'd like to see, just leave it in the comments and I will make sure to put that on my list of a future tutorial. So we're just going to jump in and get started this is the final outcome that we're going to be working with and let me give you the colors for this too. The background color is I'm working in RGB but you can make your document whatever you'd like so for the RGB these are the color builds over here for the kind of charcoal color this is the light kind of yellowish tannish color and then this is kind of gold color right here. Okay so I'm going to set this one aside and we're going to start from scratch. I do want to mention that this is a pretty advanced tutorial. So if you're not familiar with clipping masks, I would focus on some more beginner style tutorials with clipping masks before coming to this one because I'm going to keep the pace kind of quick on this one because we've got a lot to get through. So just a heads up on that. So I'm going to lay out our base text. So I'm just going to type the word hello. And this font is called Tenez and it's in the black weight. And I'll leave a link in the video description to this font if you'd like to check it out. It's one of my favorites, it's so beautiful. All right, so I'm going to color it this lighter tan color. And now we're going to create these squiggly lines that you see right here. So in order to do that, we're going to utilize our blend tool and our zigzag effect. So first I'm going to draw some lines. So grab my line tool and just draw a straight line. I'm holding shift to keep it straight. And I'm going to add some weight to this. So I'm going to apply a charcoal color stroke. And now I'm going to replicate that down here and then create a blend between these two. So this is my blend tool over here, double click. I'm gonna choose specified steps and let's see what 65 looks like. I'm going to hit OK. And all right, that looks pretty good to me. I want them nice and tight in here. Actually, you know what, let's do, um, let's make them a little tighter together. So I'm going to switch this to, let's do 80. So blend it. All right, that looks good. Let me zoom in so we can see our zigzag tool. So I'm going to come up here and go effect, distort and transform and choose zigzag. And when this pops up, we're going to hit the preview so we can see what everything looks like. We want the points to be smooth, so make sure smooth is selected. And we want to change the ridges per segment really, really high. So I'm going to do like 85 and see what that looks like. That's too much. Actually, we're going to change the size here too. We're going to do like 0 0.02 and see what that looks like. All right, that's looking much better. Let's see what 0 0.01 looks like. I kind of like the humpier kind of waves here. So we'll keep it at that. And we're going to, let's see what 95 looks like. All right, I like that. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, and we wanna make this our gold color. So I'm going to eyedropper that gold color and make sure you apply it as a stroke instead of a fill and you'll be good to go. All right, so all this is looking good. I'm going to set this to the side because I want a copy that has my stroke on it. And then I want one that's expanded so I can use it as just shape artwork. That way, if I enlarge this later on or change the size at all, then my stroke doesn't get all funky. So I'm going to create a copy and bring it down here and expand this one. Object, expand appearance, and then do it one more time. Object, expand, and hit OK. All right, so the whole reason why I set the text first as well as these wavy lines is because I want to skew both of them at the same time. So the angle that my text is at will be the exact same as my waves. That's really important. So don't do them independent. Make sure you have them both together before you apply your skew. So I need to convert my text to outlines for this because we've got all those clipping masks to deal with. So I'm going to select my text and then just go type, create outlines, and now they're shapes. So now I can select both of these and use my skew. So my skew is located underneath my scale tool over here in your toolbox. So just click on it, hold, and then choose the shear tool, shear, skew, same deal. So now I'm going to skew this up and you can see they're both skewing at the exact same time. I don't want them to be too extreme, but that feels pretty comfortable right there. All right, so now 
you can see it looks really good. And I'm actually going to reduce the size of this. All right, so that's looking really good. All right, so I'm going to set this aside for now. And next we need to create all the shapes that this is going to be in inside of for our typography. So now we're going to grab our pen tool and draw those in manually. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for my pen tool and now I'm just going to start drawing these down. I'm gonna keep this a straight line so I'm holding shift as I bring it down and it's totally fine for it to come outside of the letter. And I'm gonna hold shift again right here on the other side to make things much easier on myself and I'm going to convert this into a stroke so I can see how much of my letter the shape is taking up and I kind of want it to be around half of my my down strokes my big strokes on these serifs all right so I'm going to do the same thing over here and just keep moving right along through all of your letters and I want these squigglies to show up on the outside and on the inside curve. So if I show you my example up here, you can see I've got it around the outside edge and then on the inside edge. So I'm going to come up to the very top and come through my middle and I'm holding shift to keep this a straight arc right here and then just finish it off down here and then just come around outside. Doesn't really matter what the shape on the outside looks like. And then this time I'm gonna do the exact same thing, only I'm going to start from the inside. Hold shift, and then bring it down and close it on the inside. Okay, so now we've got all of our shapes looking good. So this is where things start getting a little bit crazy with all the clipping masks that we need to do. So I'm just going to kind of explain what's going to happen and then I'm going to show you how all this is going to work. So the important thing is, is we need to maintain this line through our letters, this line, but we don't want the line on the outside. And then we need this to be filled with our squiggly lines right here. So there's a few different things going on. So the first thing we need to do is lock these squiggly lines within the shape. So I'm going to, let me bring this one in a little bit. So I'm first going to create a clipping mask and lock this, these squigglies inside of all of these shapes. And I always make a backup copy in case I mess anything up. Um, as you're working, especially for the first time, it's always nice to have a copy because we know that this shape is the exact same angle as our typography and we don't want to lose that once we start working with it and cropping it up here. So now I'm going to come in and group all of these shapes together. Command G or Control G on a PC. All right, these are grouped. I'm going to create a copy of them because I need one copy to work as a clipping mask and I need the other copy to work as my outline so I can maintain this line through them. And whenever you create a clipping mask, the outline will get lost because this is going to fill those shapes. Hopefully that makes sense. So Command C and then click anywhere and then Command Shift V to paste it right on top of it. Okay, so now we're going to bring this up Okay, so this top copy, we're going to put a fill inside of it, and now we need to convert it into a compound path. Whenever you have multiple objects that you're using in a clipping mask, you need to convert it into a compound path. Otherwise, these squiggly lines are only going to be locked into one of these shapes instead of all the shapes. So all the shapes need to be converted to a compound path. Before you do that, make sure they're all selected, and then I'm going to hit Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC, and that converts them into a compound path. Now I can hold Shift and select my squiggly lines right click and choose make clipping mask and now they're all locked inside of there perfect so now I'm going to take my squiggly lines and I need to crop them otherwise I won't be able to create an additional clipping mask to lock everything inside of these letters so I'm going to come over to my Pathfinder palette and choose my crop icon right here so just click on that and it's all cropped now and now I'm going to grab my outline. You can see that this one is the one that's got the outline. And I'm going to expand this, so object, expand, and hit OK. So now all these are shapes instead of strokes, and I'm going to group them with my squigglies. So I'm gonna hold Shift, select my squigglies, and then Command G or Control G on a PC to group them. So now these are all grouped together, just the way I want them. And now I'm going to grab my text so my text is selected, I'm going to make a copy of it, Command C or Control C on a PC, and then click anywhere and then Command Shift V to paste right on top. So now with this top layer of my 
text, I need to convert this one into a compound path since I'm locking all of my squigglies into the text. So with the text selected, Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC, and then hold Shift, select your squigglies, right click, make clipping mask. And now I've got a clipping mask there. So everything looks great except this little area right here on my H. So I'm gonna show you how to fix this if you've got an area that is similar. So we can see we need to kind of chop this off right here and right here. So I don't need any of this extra information that's appearing over here. So what I'm going to do is hit A on my keyboard, kind of hover around until you see it selected and then click on it. And now I can zoom in nice and close and I know I want this to kind of come down straight right here. So I can hit the plus sign on my keyboard or the equal sign and I'm going to add anchor point where I want it to finish off right here. So now I can delete all these other anchor points. Hit A on my keyboard, adjust my handles so these stay nice and straight. And now I can do the exact same thing down here. So I'm going to add some anchor points. You can draw a guide too. If I turn on my rulers, I can draw a guide over so I know that these are gonna stay right in line. and now just delete the extra anchor points. All right, and now all that's left is this little line right here. So if I select it with my direct select tool, which is the keyboard shortcut A, I can click on it, and now I can just erase it with my eraser tool. So with it selected, hit Shift E, and now I can just erase that away, and that will just erase what's selected right there. So now it's out of view, and you have no idea that it's right there, and everything looks nice and even. I can turn off my guide, and there is my Art Deco text. So now I can group it all together. And now whenever I move it, it all moves together as one. So that's how to create Art Deco style typography in Adobe Illustrator. Once again, if you'd like to see a future tutorial on creating these kind of geometric, illustrative Art Deco elements that are above and below the typography, just leave it in the comments section. And if I get enough requests, I will put it on my list for a future Illustrator tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more for illustrator tutorials and design freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is at everytuesday. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.